10 o'clock on Tuesday, December 12th, Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, I thank you for each one who is gathered here today and all of their varying responsibilities that they have. I thank you for the efforts they put into making this place a wonderful place to live. I pray that you would lead them and guide them by your spirit in all the decisions that they make. Uh, Lord, we're mindful in this Christmas season of the rescue mission that uh, Jesus went on for us. And Lord, while there are many hurting around the world, we pray that you would be near to them and that they would sense your love and your presence. Lord, thank you for the overwhelming peace that we have in this area, but we're mindful that around the world it's not so. And so we pray for protection for the men and women who are in harm's way. Lord, we pray for release of hostages. We pray for, uh, Lord, your people to stand up and bring the hope of Christ. And so we thank you for all of your love. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for giving your life. And we thank you that we can celebrate this Christmas season. We praise you in your mighty name. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Everyone should have a copy of the agenda in front of them. <clears throat> Do we have a motion to approve that? Mr. Dolph, second by Mr. Hughes. Are there any questions or comments regarding the agenda? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. That motion passes. Also, I believe everyone has received a copy of the minutes from the November 14th session. Do we have a motion to approve those minutes? Williams. Is there a second? Mr. Bowers. Are there any questions or comments regarding those minutes? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. That motion passes. Next is payroll. We have a motion to approve payroll. Mr. Barron. Is there a second? Mr. Football. Are there any questions or comments regarding the payroll? Seeing none, the clerk will call the roll, please. Barons? Yes. Bowers? Yes. Pro? Yes. Ducat? Yes. Geiger? Yes. Hughes? Yes. McGinnis? Yes. Awful? Yes. Sure? Yes. Watts? Yes. Whitlow? Yes. Williams? Yes. Alt? Yes. Do we have any public comments this morning? Morning. 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 Um, most of you guys know me. I'm Ashley with the Iroquois and Ford County Workforce Development. Um, in front of you, you guys have some handouts. The first one is our East Central Illinois Workforce uh, Board Minutes. They wanted me to give you guys the annual report. Um, the next one is our WIOA Youth Program, and I'm going to talk a little bit more about this in a few minutes. And then the third one is an example of a handout that we're going to be giving. It's not the handout we're actually going to be doing. Um, if you need a handout, please let me know and I will get you copies of them. Um, East Central Illinois WorkNet received an award from the state of Illinois to update our presentation in youth space. We are excited to invest in Iroquois County and the program. More information is to come about this. Um, he will have Justin. My director will have more information for me to share, hopefully, the next board meeting. Um, we are putting out in our FP a request for proposals for youth providers in January. We strongly encourage entities in Iroquois County to apply for funding. We are looking for entities that want to provide the youth service programming. What that basically means is I do the in-school youth programming now. 
we're looking for someone else to do the in-school youth programming. Um, we're going to focus more on out-of-school youth, adults, and dislocated workers in my office, and they want to have someone else do the in-school. Uh, right now, Champaign County and Ford County both have a different, they have different entities doing the in-school youth. Um, we're looking, uh, this sh focus should be out of, they're looking for someone to do like the programming, the outreach, enrollment, case management, training, and support services. Um, and then it also is going to focus on the out-of-school youth, emerging adults 16 to 24. Good candidates would be nonprofits, education, government, or private business. The RFP will include anticipated award amounts. The task force at our RPC will receive proposals from the entities that respond to our RFP for youth providers. If you would like to know more, more information, give me a call. Um, my phone number is on the bottom of the youth program one. Iroquois County has 19 active clients. 17 should be completing their program. I'm sorry, 16 should be completing their program by the by August of 2024. The three newest are out of school youth that started at Parkland on Monday, and they will start a WEX with Donald Burrow Trucking Company in January. Um, the other two active will the other three sorry will active participants will continue their training in 2025. Um, the open enrollment for dislocated and adults will not open until June, um, but we can still help someone look for a job or do a resume or something like that. I want to elaborate a little bit more on the WOA Youth Program. Right now, what I'm looking for is businesses. I'm looking for businesses that are willing to be sponsors, basically, and have interns within their business. What that means is basically WOA pays for the we pay the use wages, we pay the use uh, insurance. Basically, the company themselves get an intern. Um, we, it's no cost to the employer. We're looking for ones that are basically, you know, manufacturing, logistics, business, healthcare, construction, and ag. So if you know any company that's within Iroquois County that would benefit from having a youth um, 18 to 24, 16 to 18 if they dropped out of high school, uh, 18 to 24 that, you know, they would like to try to do the program. Basically, we like this, I said, we have three that are working in Clifton right now at Donald Burrow Trucking. They're going to be, well, they're going to start in January. Uh, basically, what he's going to do is he's going to help, help them make sure they know how to strap down loads. You know, um, connect trailers safe, safely to the trip, the trucks. He is going to do all that, and then once they're done with their CDL program, then or when they've got their CDL permit, he will then help them behind the road until they're completely gotten their CDL. And once they've gotten their CDL, they have a chance to be hired within that company. So what we're doing is we're giving these youth an experience to make sure that this is really what they want to do. You know, we don't want them to be. A lot of youth have no idea what they want. I know my son personally, he's 17 years old, he'll be 18 in August, but he will be graduating in June, and he has no idea. He's gone from construction to physical therapist. Two totally different broad things, but they have no idea. So that is one thing that, you know, we're trying to find them placements of companies that they would have more interest in. Um, and the other thing, I'm also looking for guest speakers. I'm having a job club every month, and I am in need of guest speakers that want to come in and just tell about what they do, what they do, what what education they have, and um, basically just make it sound like it's a fun job for these youth to kind of look into. <laughs> Any questions? When you said insurance, is that like health insurance or is that liability? Like, but their liability. Okay. Yeah, okay. the workman's comp. So we pay the workman's comp, we pay their wages. Okay. And they can work anywhere from five to 40 hours a week. I mean, it's a normal job for them. It's just we pay the wages. And so let's say that your company pays $16 an hour. Then we're going to, and they start, you, you start them out at $16 an hour. We're going to start them out at $16 an hour too. So they're not. Set, you know, no one has to know that they're through the WIOA program. Okay. Any other questions? Thank you. There's no other Are there any other public comments this morning? <coughs> Seeing none, I'll close the public comment.
Thank you. 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 Thank you.
the start date, January 1st, 2020 to June 30th, 2020, that's like when all the, everything was going down. And for people to just stay in business until today, you know, and, and start a business during COVID, it's just amazing. I find it truly inspiring that people just kept going and, and kept, you know, surviving through what we've now all been through. So the deadline to apply, and this is usual, it's right around the corner, uh, January 11th. So this is why I'm sharing the new, new biz flyers with you today to help get the word out. If you know any business, and this means any inkling, that somebody you know that started a business, take a picture of it, text it to them and say, hey, check this out. And then, you know, they can determine. I was in Clifton Saturday, walked into a brand new establishment. They were having like a customer appreciation. And I talked to the owner and I said, hey, um, I'm here to talk about this new grant. And she's like, well, I'm not that good with, uh, you know, online stuff and emails. And I said, that's okay. That's what we are trained to help you do. And so we will help with application processes. And she goes, you know, I really think that I do apply for this. She goes, let me check it out and I'll get back to you. I'm really hoping that that works because it's a brand new business and she needs that. She's like, I could really use it. So this is the outreach. This, that one person, that one business, it can make a big difference for them. So they can call our office um, at 432 Again, we'll help with the application process. So, who's ready for some holiday shopping? Today we're sharing a Shop Iroquois County flyer with you. So you can share it with businesses in your communities. We've also posted it on our social media pages. Um, as Chairman Schur mentioned in November, at the November County Board meeting, shopping in Iroquois County is more important than ever. Remember, money recirculates here when purchases are made at locally owned businesses. Estimates say that every $100 spent at a non-local business, $57 leaves Iroquois County. But if you shop here, only $27, of, oh, I should say, for every $100 spent locally, only $27 leaves. So here's how your local shopping will help. Your money helps support our communities and their local economy. Your money helps support programs, safety, and administration services for the whole county. You help create local jobs. You help the environment and save money on fuel. And you conserve your tax dollars. There are 12 days left before Christmas, so when you're thinking about holiday food shopping, gassing up your car, or going out for a bite to eat, remember to shop Iroquois County first. In closing, be sure to get out and enjoy the following events coming up in December. And I put January, but I pulled something back from January because there's something coming out in January that's really cool and nothing really happens in January. So I was like, hey, I better say that. So there's something really good happening and I can't wait to tell you about that. So Thursday, December 14th, here in Watsika at the Watsika Theater, they present Jackal. So you can order your tickets today. It's on this Thursday and get ready for a rock and roll band, Jackal. Equal parts hard rock, heavy metal, and southern rock, Jackal formed in 1991 and brought rock and roll back to its down-to-earth, wild, fun-loving origins. <coughs> Jackal has been putting on legendary live shows, complete with chainsaw, chainsaw solos for nearly three decades. This show does have adult humor, so be mindful if you're bringing your kids. So this Friday and Saturday, December 16th and 17th, the Anarga American Legion Fish Fry Pancakes with Santa and Christmas Tree Lane is going on. Bring your date to the Legion Fish Fry on this Friday and then on Saturday, grab the kids and head over to Anarga Legion Hall and Durham Park for Pancakes with Santa and that's 7.30 to 11. And enjoy other yummy treats, browse all the trees. They're all decorated by local businesses and organizations and vote on your favorite with a monetary don donation. And these donations go to support the American Legion. And finally, last but not least, I would like to thank the County Board for their continued support that we've seen in 2023. And we look forward to working with and supporting Chairman Schur and all the new board members, uh, whoever would be in 2024, we are here to help and support all the county de um, departments too. And we thank you for your continued support. 
Uh, thank you for your time. Is there any questions? Wonderful. Again, very important for more information on these topics. Um, or if you know a business that would like to sign up for our not notifications, which uh, reaching out and going out into all these businesses that I connected with over this past week, um, I got their emails and they were thankful because a lot of businesses truly feel like they're out there on their own and they're not. That's what we're here for. So please call our office at 432-0072 and send the referrals our way. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Angel. Don't be afraid to make copies of that flyer that Angel has given you this morning. Take it to your local businesses. Have them put it in their windows or whatever. That's one of the best ways we can get the word out. Are there any other outside organization reports this morning? Seeing none, we'll move on to the committee reports. Members of the County Board, your committee to whom was referred policy and procedure would beg leave to submit the following report on the matters before them. Your committee met at the Administrative Center on November 30, 2023 at 9 a.m. Members present were Sear, Barons, Alt, Offal, and Whitlow. Paul Duquette and Michael McTaggart were absent. Also present, County Clerk Brian Suver. EMA Director Scott Anderson, ICPHD Administrator Eric Sacy, and County Board Member Doug Geiger. The meeting was called to order. It was moved by Offal and seconded by Woodrow to approve the agenda. The motion carried by a voice vote. There were no public comments. EMA Director Scott Anderson distributed his monthly report to the committee. There were no incidents to report. The Natural Hazard Mitigation Plan contracts have been finalized and signed. American Environmental has been contacting the stakeholders presented in the spreadsheets Anderson created. A press release will be coming from them soon and will reflect the importance of attending the January 18th meeting in Crescent City. <clears throat> Anderson received the final copy of the 2024 EMP grant. The original amount requested was $23,047. The final amount approved was $18,913.05. Anderson explained the awarded amount was felt by agencies statewide due to the shrinking population and the overall monies allocated from FEMA FEMA. Anderson attended in-person and online training that have qualified him to receive certifications in the following. Principles of Emergency Management, <clears throat> IS 00242C Effective Communication. The Local Emergency Planning Committee met on Wednesday, November 8th. Although there was not a quorum, they continued with business that could be completed. Discussion was held regarding a tabletop training exercise to hopefully be held in the spring. This type of training will meet EMA in satisfying deliverable requirements needed to stay compliant with our EMP grant. Continued input will be gathered at the next scheduled meeting on December 13. Anderson attended a mutual aid fire association meeting at the Papanaw Fire Department on November 29 and provided an update on the status of the hazard mitigation plan and the need for as many of the county entities to be part of that process. Anderson will be attending the Iroquois County Amateur Radio Club meeting November 30 and will continue to solicit volunteers from the group. Anderson informed the committee that as elected officials, they are responsible for ensuring the public safety and welfare of the people of Iroquois County. They may need to provide strategic guidance and resources during preparedness response and recovery efforts. Elected officials must have a clear understanding of their roles and responsibilities for successful emergency management and response. 
Anderson strongly recommends that each board member complete IS 700 NIMS and introduction ISC-100 Introduction to the Incident Command System and IS-908 Emergency Management for Senior Officials. These classes are all available online and can be taken at your leisure. Once completed or if the class has already been taken, please email your certificate to Anderson. A meeting with the EMA volunteers was held on November 15. A total of nine volunteers were in attendance with two absent. Background checks were started this week as requested by Sheriff Clint Perzee. <clears throat> A rank structure has been established and training will begin during the January meeting. The training will be focused on emergency communications. Anderson has also requested a severe weather spotting course to be held in Iroquois County and to be presented by the National Weather Service. County Board Chairman Chair reminded Anderson that all volunteers need to go through an approval process and a volunteer list should be submitted to him for review. With the assistance of EMA volunteers, Anderson continued to organize and redesign the radio room within the EOC. The antenna on the roof of the courthouse has been installed and is fully operational. Anderson plans to post cold weather preparedness information as well as holiday safety strategies on social media. Anderson will also share information from the National Weather Service that is pertinent to the county. The committee chairs gave their monthly reports. Management Chairman Barnes reported the committee will receive their normal monthly reports. Sure said he was informed of an incident that occurred in the Workforce Development Office. Their office does not have a panic button and sure would like the committee to take the necessary steps to ensure they get one installed. Sure was also informed of office space at the end of the building that is experiencing leaks in the office when it rains. And this issue needs to be looked into. Highway Chairman All reported a resolution will be presented to the committee to extend County Engineer Greg Perkinson's contract with the county. Also, a candidate is being interviewed for the County Engineer position on December 4. Health Chairman Alpha reported the Health Committee will hear their standard reports. The Tax Planning and Zoning Committee will continue discussion on the 2023 levy. <clears throat> Judicial Chairman Whitlow reported the committee will hear their standard reports from the departments from the department heads. During Chairman comments, Sheriff stated he made several comments at the last county board meeting about the need for people to shop local as much as possible and the effect it makes on the county when they do shop local. Since that time, Sure said he has received a lot of positive feedback. However, Sure feels many people do not fully understand the impact and what it means for this county in terms of revenue, jobs, and overall economic health. Shopping local is something that should be a focal point of the county board's operations, and all board members should be trying to broadcast this message throughout the county. Sure discussed online shopping and the sales tax being charged. He believes this is something to look further into to ensure monies are being distributed correctly. Sure said he will discuss the matter with Treasurer Kurt Albers and Finance Manager Joe Johnson. A membership invoice was received from Illinois Association of County Board Members and Commissioners. At this time, the county is a member of United Counties Council of Illinois annual membership dues are paid each year due to their funding. UCCI has been able to refund the dues. The committee agreed not to join Illinois Association of County Board Members and Commissioners at this time or pay the invoice. The committee continued their review of the county code book. Revisions are as follows. Section 6-231, Potentially Dangerous Dog. Ad owner of a dog determined to be potentially dangerous shall have the same rights of appeal as is granted in Section 6-230. Section 6-292, Report of Bite. 
the committee discussed the $25 public safety fine stated in the county code. The health committee will hold further discussion on the matter. Section 6-321, general standards. Number three, sure recommends the floors of the building be a permanent construction with no cracks or openings for seepage. Sure also question whether there are any kennels in the county where the runs are not concrete. The health committee will review the current kennel licenses. Number eight, remove the listing of dog breeds and revise the paragraph to read any kennel license should provide perimeter fencing of sufficient design to securely confine all dogs under their control. Section 6-322, Procedure for Application. Under item E2, Remove Regional Planning. Section 6-324, <clears throat> to Suspension, Mediation, or Revocation of the Conditional Abuse Permit. A3, which discusses conviction of a violation of any law of the state except minor violations and violations not related to the disposition of dogs and cats and other animals. Sure will consult with State's Attorney Jim Devine on this matter. Appointments will be made at the county board meeting. Correspondence was distributed to the committee. Reimbursement was received from UCCI for meetings attended. There were no claims submitted for approval. <clears throat> there was no old business. There was no new business. As there was no further business to come before the committee, it was moved by Alpha, seconded by Barons to adjourn at 10.36 a.m. That motion carried by a voice vote, all of which is respectfully submitted, signed by all members present, and I move for the adoption of the report. Second by Mr. Williams. Are there any questions or comments on the report? Seeing none, the clerk will call the roll, please. Bowers? Yes. Pro? Yes. Ducat? Yes. Uh, Dagger? Yes. Hughes? Yes. McGinnis? Yes. Awful? Yes. Sure? Yes. Watts? Yes. Whitlow? Yes. Williams? Yes. Alt? Yes. And Barron's? Yes. Too fast here now. Okay, management service. Okay. Mr. Chairman and members of the county board, your committee to whom was referred management services would beg leave to submit the following report on matters before them. Your committee met at the administrative center on December 4, 2023, at 904 9 a.m. Members present were Baron Flowers, Pro, Mitchell Benson, John Jumal were absent. Also present, County Board Chairman John Schur, Finance Manager Jill Johnson. Maintenance Supervisor Chris Drake, Sheriff Humphrey D, and County Board Member Doug Geiger. The meeting was called to order. It is moved by Bowers and second by Board Chairman John Schur to approve the agenda. Motion carried by a voice vote. There were no public comments. Maintenance Supervisor Chris Drake report included the following. A considerable amount of painting was done in the jail over the past couple of months around the cell block areas, catwalks, and hallways. The old visitation area upstairs is now being used as a holding area. Electrical work was done and tamper-proof lighting was installed as well. Two, two dead trees were removed from the Administrative Center property. The Administrative Center painting project is complete. A heat pump in the Workforce Development Office needs replaced. Drake said there is a five to seven week lead time on the heat pump. Moyen cleanup was done at the Animal Control Building. There is concrete work that needs to be taken care of on the ramp area of the courthouse. This will be handled next spring. Carpets in the assessment office were cleaned. County Farm Fertilizer Invoice was received and submitted for payment in the amount of $37,389.28. A notice was sent to Walker Farms requesting reimbursement for the fertilizer payment. Sure provided an update on the morgue stating work is progressing at the last board meeting, a drawing was included in a packet from the architect for the layout of the morgue. Sure said the drawing hasn't been reviewed by Coroner Bill Cheatham, but intends to do so this week. The agreement with MG2A was signed after the board meeting last month. MG2A has completed their surveying work and is in the process of putting together information for a presentation to the city of Waxica. Last Friday, Geiger met with Weber Plumbing and Heating to discuss some of the arrangements for piping. 
sure said once everything is completed with MG2A and the architect, the project should be ready to be put out for bid. Sure is hoping this will be done within the next month. Sure noted some of the final steps depend on getting approval from the city of Watsika as far as the site and what work has to be completed to meet the requirements. Parents discussed the fence installation at the Animal Control Building, stating it was decided at the November board meeting to move forward with the installation. Parents said specifications need to be written up and sent to vendors. Prior to writing out specifications, Julie will need to be contacted to have the area marked. Barons will meet with Drake to discuss the preliminary items that need to be handled. The FSA leak is coming, lease is coming due September 2024. Barons reminding the committee that after the previous lease was signed, the FSA office provided us with several pages of items that need to be updated throughout the administrative center. Some of these items include updates to doors, bathrooms, and drinking fountains. Barons expects the list to be brought to our attention again once our lease is close to its expiration date. The committee will need to review the list and determine the cost of updates in order to incorporate these costs in their new lease. Drake added that they are also requesting additional janitorial <coughs> services. Parents said this is something that can also be worked into, the lease, into their lease if we choose to offer these additional services. Sheriff Clint Perdy presented a lease agreement from the administrative office of the Illinois Courts. The contract is for Lease, leasing space for the pretrial services in the courthouse and has been restructured to include back rent starting on October, October 15th. The total space being used is 231 square feet. The lease is a five year agreement at $16.62 per square foot for the first three years and $13 per square foot for the remaining two. The total revenue for the five year agreement amounts to $17,517.72. Sure question whether the $13 per square foot would be sufficient for four years from now. Johnson stated there is a renter in the administrative center that is currently only paying $9.50 per square foot. Also, the space being leased at the courthouse wasn't a revenue source until now. It was moved by Crow and second by Bowers to accept the administrative office of the Illinois Courts Lease Agreement for office space with the terms presented. A roll call vote was taken, motion carried. Sure spoke about an incident that occurred recently at the Workforce Development Office. This incident was highlighted. This incident has highlighted the fact that none of the offices have panic buttons. And Sure thought this was something that was agreed upon some time ago to have them installed. Perzee said he presented an application to the Upper Committee last year to update the security system at the courthouse that would also encompass the administrative center and highway department. The Architect Committee tabled the application and eventually declined funding. Perzee moved forward with updating the system at the courthouse and jail, and the project should be completed within the next week. The Treasurer's Office moved forward to having security cameras installed, and the Highway Department had alarms and cameras installed as well. Johnson noted the ARPA application submitted was for $29,000 for the entire project. Perzee will request updated pricing for the Administrative Center and report back to the committee. The Grant Street bid proposal was emailed to the committee members for the review and feedback. The dates on the proposal will be changed to December 12th board meeting date and bids will be open at the February Management Committee meeting. Also, the committee removed the verbiage that states the project must be completed within six months of bid letting. It was moved by Bowers and second by Barons to put the Grant Street drainage project out for bid. Roll call vote was taken. Barron's I, Bowers I, Crow abstained. Motion carried. When you reviewed the claims, it was moved by Bowers and second by Crow to pay the claims subject to county board approval. Roll call vote was taken. Motion carried. During old business, Drake reminded the committee that mowing bids will need to be sent out next month. During new business, the management committee meeting for January has been changed to January from January 1 to January 3rd at 1 p.m. due to the New Year holiday. As there was no further business to come before the committee, it was moved by Bowers and second by Barron's to adjourn at 9.50 a.m. Motion carried, all of which is respectfully submitted. I move for its adoption. Motion the floor to approve the Management Committee report. <coughs> Excuse me, second by Mr. Williams. Are there any questions or comments about the report? Seeing none, the clerk will call the roll, please. Bowers? Yes. Crow? Yes. 
Bucat? Yes. Geiger? Yes. Hughes? Yes. Uh, McGinnis? Yep. Awful? Yes. Sure? Yes. Watts? Yes. Whitlow? Yes. Williams? Yes. Um, Alt? Yes. And Barons? Yes. Okay, ARPA committee, Mr. Ducat. Mr. Chairman, members of the county board, the committee to whom was referred ARPA, would beg to leave submit the following report the matters before the committee met at the Administrative Center on December 4, 2023 at 10 a.m. Members present for Duke at Alt, Crow, Awful, and Sure. Also present, Finance Manager Jill Johnson, Supervisor of Assessment Mia McCammon, and County Board Member Doug Geiger. The meeting was called to order. It was moved by John Scher and seconded by Donna Crow to approve the agenda. Motion carried by a voice vote. There were no public comments. The committee continued their review of ARPA applications as follows. Application 130 and 131, Assessment Office for DevNet Camera Software and Property Parcel Digitization Work. Supervisor of Assessments, Mia McCammon, reported the request for proposals were due Monday, November 27th in the County Clerk's Office. One bid was received for the aerial photography and two bids were received for the camera software. McCammon said she contacted a few other flyover companies and none of them submitted their proposals. Bids will be opened at the December 5th Tax Planning and Zoning Committee meeting. Application number 92, the Iroquois County Morgue. Sure, rep sure reported the morgue is progressing nicely, but until the project is put out for bids, there isn't an accurate assessment on what the total cost will be. During the business, Crow informed the committee that the Learning Tree Daycare located within the First Christian Church was scheduled for closure at the end of the year for various reasons. However, Sherry Johnson with the Wasika Park District has offered space for the daycare to continue operating. During new business, the committee discussed rescheduling the ARPA meeting in January due to the New Year's holiday. The committee scheduled an ARPA meeting for Thursday, December 7th at 12 p.m. and Wednesday, January 3rd at 12.30 p.m. Also during new business, Crow noted an incident that occurred in the Workforce Development Office and their office does not have panic buttons. Sheriff Clint Brzee is requesting updated estimates for these items. Finance Manager Jill Johnson recommended using local tribal funds to pay for the security project. As there was no further business to come before the committee, it was moved by Charlie Alt and seconded by Sheriff to adjourn at 10, 10 a.m. Motion carried by voice vote. All of which is respectfully submitted and asked for its approval. I'll go on to the next one. Mr. Chairman, members of the county board, your committee to whom was referred, ARPA would beg to lead the following report on the matter before them. The committee met at the Administrative Center on December 7th, 2023, at 12.01 a.m. Members present were Duque, Alt, Crow, Awful, and Sure. Also present, Finance Manager Joe Johnson and Supervisor of Assessments, Mia McCannon. The meeting was called to order. It was moved by John Sure and seconded by Charlie Alt to approve the agenda. The motion carried by a voice vote. There were no public comments. The committee com continued their review of the article applications as follows. Application number 130, the assessment office for the DevNet Camera software. It was moved by Sure and seconded by Donna Crow to table action on the application number 130 for the DevNet Camera software. A roll call vote was taken, motion carried. Application 131, assessment office for property parcel digitization work. Sure reported bids were opened at the tax planning and zoning committee meeting. Eagleville, Eagle View submitted a bid in the amount of $410,628 for six years. Since then, a letter has been received from Eagleville, Eagle View indicating if we were to enter a six-year agreement with them, by the end of the year, we will receive a 3% discount, which will be needed to be paid in full by the time we receive the flyover information. The updated pricing is $397,238.40. It was moved by Sure to adopt a resolution accepting the proposal from Eagle View at a cost of $397,238.40, with the understanding that all agreements will be completed before December 31st, 2023. Continued discussion was held on the bids open at the, TAN, the Tax, Planning, and Zoning Committee meeting. Crow requested further information regarding the bids received for the CAMA software. Vanguard's bid total was $170,523 and DevNet's bid total of $51,301. Supervisor of Assessment Neil McCann said the bid from Vanguard includes modules and other items that aren't needed. She further explained that DevNet's bid mirrors the bid 
be presented at an earlier date and is not based on the request for proposal that was sent out. When creating the request for proposal, McCammon used information from the other counties and a few items were overlooked, such as the number of workstations needed. The bid from Vanguard reflects these items. Vanguard's bid will be will decrease once these items are revised. Finance Manager Jill Johnson added that if the committee chooses Vanguard, they also need to look at the labor costs for area-wide to install a server. This work does not need to be done with DevNet as you already have a DevNet server. Also, Johnson reminded the committee that it was previously discussed to take $100,000 from the GIS fund to pay for a portion of the flyover. Schur amended his motion to adopt a resolution accepting the proposal from Eagle View at a cost of $297,238.40 and $100,000 to be paid from the GIS fund with the understanding that all agreements will be completed before December 31st, 2023. Close second the amended motion. A roll call vote was taken, motion carried. Application number 92, the Iroquois County Morgue. The application submitted was for $225,000 and $15,800 and has already been spent on the purchase of a cooler. Sure reported the morgue project is progressing and he hopes to put the project off a bid soon. Crow confirmed that Johnson is keeping track of the administrative costs in relation to ARPA. Johnson stated that she has only been charging paper and supplies as she does not feel comfortable charging salaries to the ARPA until ARPA fund until the committee formally requests her to do so. However, Johnson has had an estimated number of hours contributed towards ARPA related items. There was no old business, there was no new business, it was further there is no further business to come before the committee. It is moved by Awful and seconded by Crow to adjourn at 12.21 p.m. Motion carried by a voice vote. All of which is respectfully submitted and asked for approval. We have a motion on the floor to approve the two ARPA committee reports. Do we have a second? Please. Do we have any questions or comments on the report? Mr. Watts? Is this Eagle View Company, um, is it drones or is it human beings flying airplanes? Humans flying airplanes. Sorry? Humans flying airplanes. airplanes. Okay. Yeah. Mr. Geiger, do you have a question? Clarification. On the second uh, at the meeting, uh, we talked about the uh, 18500 spent on the purchase of the cooler. Agreed. Except that wasn't included in the bid proposal of $225,000 for the building. So I don't want people to think that the 18, excuse me, 15800 comes out of the 225 building estimate. Because it doesn't. The coroner indicated he was taking that out of his automation funds. Right. So we just need to make sure this verbiage in here reflects that. Thank you. Mrs. Carl? Um, I thought there was a change, and I thought, in fact, we were taking that out of there. Jill can clarify because I thought we switched when we took the property that he's using and he was going to pay the rent out of his automation fund, and then the cost of the cooler is coming out of that 225000 is my recollection. Yeah, that is correct. He agreed to take the 1500 a month out of his automation account. He would not have had enough money to purchase the cooler on top of that, so it got taken out of the ARPA account, or it got taken out of ARPA funds, um, however, the amount on his application can be amended once we know of an estimated cost of what it's going to cost to put in the morgue. So it would include the building, um, <coughs> excuse me, building in the supplies that he would need, which was the cooler. Um, but the original requested amount for the building was 260000 Somewhere along the line, it got lowered to two twenty-five. dollars but nothing has been formally voted on as far as accepting an award for the board, so it can be adjusted again. I would just add that some of that may be subject to change depending upon how long that rent is going to be paid and so forth. Well, if we paid for the cooler, and I think he submitted a separate application to ARPA for that cooler, didn't he? Yeah, we had a, uh, we had a meeting, and he so we got the application number. Then you got A and B. Is that, yeah. is that how it was? Mm -hmm. 
One, one thing that maybe we can clarify or update in the minutes. In the uh, paragraph on the last page for the second report where it talks about the cost of the flyover, it states that the flyover would be at a cost of $297, $238, $297,000, $238, Forty cents with the one hundred thousand to be paid from the GIS fund. It should say that the cost is three hundred and ninety-seven two thirty-eight forty, and one hundred thousand of that amount is being paid from the GIS fund. I think everybody understands what it is, but to be sure that the minutes are clear on that. That's the reason I'm bringing it up. But it'd be less than three percent then too. So that's that the three ninety seven is a three percent four ten. Yep. Okay. Is there any other questions or comments about the Indian of the Arpa reports? Seeing none, would you call the real please? Crow? Yes. Ducat? Yes. Geiger? Yes. Hughes? Yes. McGinnis? Yes. Awful? Yes. Sure. Yes. Watts? Yes. Whitlow? Yes. William? Yes. Alt? Yes. Barron? Yes. And Bauer? Yes. Motion carried. Okay, Health Committee, Mrs. Awful. Mr. Chairman and members of the County Board, the committee to whom was referred health would beg leave to submit the following report on the matters before them. Your committee met at the Administration Center on December 5th, 2023 at 9 a.m. Members present were also Ducat, Geiger, Hughes, and Whitlow. Also present, County Board Chairman John Schur, Finance Manager Jill Johnson, and ICPHD Administrator Eric Cece. The meeting was called to order. It was moved by Steve Hughes and seconded by Jed Whitlow to approve the agenda. Motion carried by a voice vote. <coughs> The committee reviewed the claims that was moved by Doug Geiger and seconded by Whitlow to pay the claims. Subject to county board approval. A roll call vote was taken, motion carried. There were no public comments. <clears throat> Finance manager Jill Johnson reported the registration deposit for November was $5,190. There are eight cases currently open, <coughs> excuse me, with eight cats and five dogs waiting for, for placement. The animal control officers closed 25 cases in November. The closed cases consisted of 10 dogs running loose, two bite reports, three well checks, five cats and dogs hit by a car, two deceased dogs due to a house fire, one nuisance dog and one abandoned dog. There was a bat taken for testing, which tested negative for rabies. Also, Animal Control took possession of a dog due to deceased owner. However, the dog has been claimed by another family member. Johnson reports she enrolled Animal Control officers Linda Rivard and Jacob Williams in the Humane Investigator Licensure class. The class must be taken every three years. Rivard and Williams had completed the class and taken their test. Johnson is awaiting their test results. Health Chairman Barbara Awful <clears throat> began discussion on the $25 public safety fine for a biting animal that is listed in the county code. Johnson stated part of the Illinois Animal Control Act says we can apprehend and pound said animal and charge a $25 public safety fine. However, the fine can be waived or refunded in the event of a first time offense. Johnson said more times than not, animal owners are attempting to get their animals back either don't have the money or don't have the full amount of money required. In these cases, Johnson has made making judgment calls because it costs more money to hold the animals at our facility and try to get the animal placed elsewhere than to release the animal back to its owner and receive partial payment. Also said the policy and procedure committee is considering Increasing the fine. Johnson said the fine can be increased, but she will have to continue weighing the option of what will be most cost effective in terms of holding the dog until payment can be made or releasing the dog with no payment or partial payment. The committee recommends increasing the public safety 
fine for inviting animal from $25 to $50. The committee also discussed the requirements for kennel flooring. It was agreed to leave the language as it is in the county code. Awful requested an update on the fence installation of the animal control building. Johnson said the management uh, committee has taken on this responsibility. Maintenance supervisor Chris Drake is going to contact Julie, have the area marked and request updated proposals. ICPHD Administrator Eric Cece distributed the monthly summary reported programs. Environmental Health reported 45 food inspections and one food complaint. There were three boil orders in November. West Nile surveillance ended in uh, October. Moderna and Pfizer vaccines are available. Both vaccinations are available for individuals 12 years and above. Moderna is available for individuals under 12 years of age. All vaccine fees have been updated as of December 1st. Community Health reported an increase in respiratory illnesses and COVID-19 cases. There were two animal bites. There were two COVID-19 outbreaks in long-term care facilities. No new tuberculosis cases were reported. Community outreach events included Narcan training for the Sheriff's Department and a flu, flu clinic for the CILA in Cisna Park. The Illinois Breast and Cervical Cancer Program is showing an increase in numbers. This program offers underinsured under or uninsured individuals testing done for breast and cervical cancers. Uh, inmate assessments at the jail are decreasing. Vision and hearing technicians continue to be in the schools providing screenings. Senior services had 33 annual need-based assessments. 10 new client assessments and has a total of 192 <coughs> clients on services. CC presented the ICHCPHD 2022 annual report. CC explained the report as an overview of ICPHD's services. Each department is listed as well as the services offered and the numbers associated with their services. The report was approved. The Board of Health and CC requested approval of the Health Committee before submitting the final report to the state. It was moved by Hughes and second by Geiger to approve the 22 Iroquois County Public Health Department annual report. A roll call vote was taken. Motion carried. Paul Ducat asked CC for information on white lung. CC said white lung is not a reportable communicable disease, so he will not be able to report an accurate number of cases. There is no business, old business, there was no new business. As there was no further business to come before the committee, it was moved by Ducat and seconded by Whitlow to adjourn at 9.32 a.m. Motion carried by a voice vote, all of which is respectfully submitted, and I move for its adoption. Motion on the floor to approve the report of the House Committee. Is there a second? Mr. Rawls. Are there any questions or comments regarding the report? Seeing none, the clerk will call the roll here. Ducat? Yes. Geiger? Yes. Hughes? Yes. McGinnis? Yes. Awful? Yeah. Sure? Yep. Watts? Yes. Whitlow? Yes. Williams? Yes. Alt? Yes. Barons? Yes. Vince? Uh, sorry, he's not here. Uh, Bowers? Yes. And Crow? Yes. Motion carried. <laughs> <clears throat> Mr. <clears throat> Members of the County Board, the following is a report of the matters to come before the County Board as it pertains to the Truth and Taxation Public Hearing. County Board met at the Administrative Center on December 7, 2023 at 11 a.m. Members present were all Barons, Bowers, Crow, Ducat, Geiger, Hughes, McGinnis, Alpha, Cyril Watts, Whitlow, Williams, Absent Benson McTaggart. Also present were County Clerk Brian Suver and Finance Director Jill Johnson. The public hearing was called to order. It was moved by Mr. Williams and seconded to approve the agenda. That motion carried by a voice vote. Chair explained that the truth and taxation public hearing has been called due to the fact that the board anticipates passing a tax levy that is over 5% of the previous year extension 
of $5,684,052.43. He added that the proposed corporate and special purpose property taxes to be levied for 2023 payable 2024 are $6,149,668, which represents an increase of 8.19% over the previous year. The floor was open for comments and questions from the public. As there was no public in attendance, the comment period was closed. As there was no further business to come before the board, it was moved by Mr. Burns and seconded to close the public hearing at 11.03 a.m. <clears throat> that motion carried by a voice vote, all of which was respectfully submitted. I've moved to upload, <clears throat> I make a motion to approve this report. Second by Mr. Williams. With, with one minor thing, uh, Mr. Zumwalt was also absent. Oh, thank you. Any other comments, questions? See none, call the roll, please. <clears throat> Geiger? Yes. Hughes? Yes. McGinnis? Yes. Awful? Yes. Sure? Yes. Watts? Yes. Whitlow? Yes. Williams? Yes. Alt? Yes. Barons? Yes. Bowers? Yes. Crow? Yes. Ducat? Yes. Motion carried. Okay, tech planning and zoning. Ducat. To the very back of your packet. Mr. Chairman <clears throat> and members of the County Board, the committee to whose reform tax planning and zoning would beg to leave to submit the following report on the matters before them. Your committee met at the Administrative Center on December 5th, 2023 at 9.30 a.m. Members present were Duke at Alpha, Geiger, Hughes, and Jed Whitlow. Also present, County Board Chairman, Sure, Finance Manager, Jill Johnson, County Clerk, Leon Suber, Supervisor of Assessment, Nate McCammon, <clears throat> Planning and Zoning Minister, Julie Feller, Treasurer, Kurt Alberts, and IC PhD Administrator Eric CC. The meeting was called to order. It was moved by Doug and seconded by Whitlow to amend the agenda to discussion and take action on the application for Mark and Kyle Baldazar of Central Body Repair after public comments. Motion carried by a voice vote. The committee reviewed the claims. It was moved by Geiger and seconded by Offal to pay the claims subject to county board approval. A roll call vote was taken. Motion carried. There were no public comments. Discussion was held on consideration for conditional use for Mark and Kyle Balazar of Central Body Repair. Planning and Zoning Administrator Julie stated the building is currently zoned as agriculture and will eventually need to be zoned as commercial. The building is being used for storage of their vehicles. It was moved by Geiger and seconded by Offal to approve the application of Mark and Kyle Balazar of Central Body Repair for conditional use for towing storage. A roll call vote was taken, motion carried. The department heads gave their monthly reports. County Clerk Green Suber reported filing finished up yesterday. There are no Democratic candidates for running for county board, county clerk, coroner, or state's attorney. There is almost a full slate of Republican candidates, however. County Board District 4 only has one candidate running. Suber said this will be an issue at some time getting the seat uh, filled. There are two Democratic precinct committee people that filed and quite a few Republican precinct commitment people that have filed also. Lists are available in the county clerk's office. Letters were sent yesterday to all taxing bodies that haven't submitted their levies or budgets, reminding them to submit their levies by the last Tuesday in December. Statements of economic interest lists will be going out to the taxing body clerks at the beginning of January. These are sent out to obtain the list of persons that are required to file a statement of economic interest from each of the taxing bodies. The county clerk's office will begin working on ballots and getting everything certified by the state. Suver noted there is an objection, re objection re period that candidates can have their petitions objected to uh, through next Monday. And there is also a withdrawal of candidacy. Lastly, the presentation went well with the new election equipment. <laughs> Treasurer Kurt Albers reported the tax sale is being held Thursday at 9 a.m. The Treasurer's Office will begin working on refunds and the final tax distribution will be done this month. Albers discussed a matter that was brought to him by County Board Chairman John Scherer in regards to sales tax. Albers said he is also looking into the matter and checking, entering various addresses and checking the sales tax charge for all tax rates were being corrected. 
were being correctly charged. Albers contacted only the Department of Revenue who advised Albers of the correct rates for Iroquois County and also stated the rates are listed on the website. If the county would like to proceed with, with an investigation, we would need to contact the vendors and find out why they were charging the incorrect amount of sales tax. Supervisor of Assessment, Mia McCann reported request for a proposal for the camera system and the flyover will be open today. The EV, EAVs that were sent to Johnson in November are still fairly accurate. McCammon said the high number right now after equalization is approximately $7 million higher than this based on having over $2 million in properties being assessed for the first time in between commercial and residential. However, there are a large amount of appeals already in the assessment office and once the assessment mounts go out and the publications are complete, she is certain the number of appeals will double. The high number will come back down due to the number of appeals being filed and some of them rightfully being lowered for various reasons by the Board of Review. The Board of Review is currently a member down that both Sher and McCammon have found candidates that are potentially interested and are part of the Democratic Party. McCammon will reach out to both of them later this week and hopes to have someone appointed at Tuesday's board meeting. The deadline for the filing of an appeal is January 22nd. McCammon still intends to meet with the state's attorney, Jim Devine, before the end of the year to create some type of intergovernmental agreement between the counties and townships that are choosing not to have a township assessor. There are two township assessors that are willing to contact with anybody to do the work. McCammon said she will need to look into the matter a little bit more, but her initial thought is to charge a total of $80 per parcel which includes 45 for data collection and 35 for data entry valuations. Tax planning is only chairman Paul Duke at open bid for the aerial photography and digital ortho imagery as follows. Eagle view, two flights over a six year period and a total price of $65,218. The first project uh, is in spring of 2024. We'll have a project cost of $195,654 including the flight and corresponding software. In addition, spring of 2024 includes an optional building outlines project to begin a chain finder comparison from spring of 2024 to county provided imagery from 2014. The second proposed flight project is anticipated in 2027 for the same amount of $195,654. This cost was spread over three years. There is also a one-time charge of $19,320 for Eagle View Cloud building outlines. You can open the bid for real property, computer-assisted, NASA appraisal systems as follows. Vanguard appraisals incorporated option one. Camera software at $76,097.50 for license and service for the first year and $20,325 for service for only, the, for only four, two through five. Camera creates a $13,125 uh, price for fees for license and service for the first year. Option two, the five years total amount may be spread evenly over the five years. That's $34,104.50 per year at no additional cost. DevNet, camera software license, support, and maintenance at a cost of $7,100 for years one through five. Support and training at a cost of $2,250 for year one and years two through five included. Apex sketching licensing per seat at a cost of $655 for year one and $260 for years two through five. Marshall and Swift RTI and RTU license commercial egg at a cost of $2,203.48 for year one $2,283.58 for year two, $2,367.43 for year three, $2,455.04 for year four, and $2,546.41 for year five. The committee held discussion on the bids received. Finance Manager Jill Johnson provided information in the GIS fund stating that there is a balance of $165,000 in the fund and the committee could choose to use up to 120,000 from this fund to pay for a portion of the flyover. The remaining balance of $290,620 will be funded by ARPA's funds, 
which would also leave a balance of $409,372 to fund the MORG and the CAMA software project. Also, approximately $65,000 is earned each year for the GIS fund, but a portion of these funds pays for the GIS employee. In regards to the CAMA software, and the, CAMA software the committee noted the DevNet bid is cheaper than the Vanguard, but McCammon has stated that many other counties are moving from DevNet to Vanguard. Geiger also inquired on whether an increase in staff would be necessary for the project. And McCammon said she does not anticipate an increase. UCAT recommended the committee move forward with the flyover portion of the bid and table the CAMA software. Suver added the GIS flyover is utilized by almost every department in the county. It was moved by Geiger. It was seconded by Steve Hughes to accept Eagle Views a proposal for aerial photography and digital ortho imagery. A roll call vote was taken, motion carried. Planning and Zoning Administrator Julie Fowler presented her monthly report to the committee as follows. Building permits for November 2023. Agriculture 2, Residential 8, Wind Tower 0, Solar Field 0, Solicitor Applications 1, Solicitor, Solicitor's License 1. Building permits for FY 2023. Residential is 117, Agricultural is 19, Wind Towers is 0, Solar Field is 0, Solar License 5, Kennel License 7, Mobile Homes 3, Campgrounds 4. Building Inspection November 2023-21. Zoning Board of Appeals 1128, Bolzer. Central Body Repair Towing Storage. Zoning Board of Appeals recommends approval. Fellow reporter Marvin Andreas is not renewing his appointment on the Zoning Board of Appeals. With his departure, the ZBA is down to three members, and this is going to cause an issue with having a quorum at some point. Fuller asked if she could be advised and how to try to get new recruits. There are 10 alternate energy companies in the county that are active. However, not all of them are going door to door, so Fuller cannot enforce a solicitor's license. Fuller also discussed building codes, updated electrical ver versions, have been requested by the electrical inspectors, but the county code states to use the 2011 version. Sure stated the policy and procedure committee has asked this committee to review and make recommendations, changes to the building codes in the county code book. Suver presented a resolution for the sale of two parcels in Woodland. The trustees sold the parcels at $2,500. It was moved by Geiger and second by Whitlow to approve the resolution authorizing the sale of properties in Woodland through the delinquent tax process. A roll call vote was taken, motion carried. Discussion was held on the levy. Geiger explained the finance committee had a target of $1.9 million needed to be generated from real estate taxes to balance the budget. If the board raises the tax rate 1.0487%, this will generate $1.93 million, which will satisfy the needs of the finance committee. If the middle rate Projection is selected at 1.07%. Over $2 million will be generated. And if the high rate of 1.08% is selected, over $2 million will also be generated. The fees will trigger a truth in taxation. Geiger also noted property tax revenue in 2022 was $1.77 million and is budgeted at $1.9 million for 2024. Sales and use tax revenue in 2022 was $1.97 million and is budgeted at $1.34 million for 2024. And income tax in 2022 was $1.58 million and is budgeted at $1.21 million. Gregor told the committee he believes the board can approve the low rate of 1.0487% and meet the county's need. Sure added that it is possible that the county will have several years in truth and taxation going forward. Geiger continues stating the difference between the low and the high rate is 108000 at the corporate level. This would also impact county highway and would be a $40,000 difference and a $20,000 difference for both bridge and matching tax. There was no old business. There was no new business as it was further to come before the committee. It was moved by Geiger, seconded by Whitlow to adjourn at 12, 18 p.m. Motion carried by a voice vote. All of which is respectfully submitted and I ask for it to stop. There's a motion on the floor to approve the tax only committee report. Is there a second? Are there any questions or comments about the report? Mr. 
Um, Jill, I'm trying to um, reconcile the math on page two. Actually, three. I can't hear you with your paper in front of you. The committee in, in um, I don't know, paragraph down, the big paragraph is mid page. It came up. Right. right. Where we're where it says we have a balance of four hundred and nine thousand three seventy two. So I'm correct in then deducting two hundred and twenty five thousand dollars from that for the more, which if you know things hold true, there might be an overage in. Very possible. And um, then we have the balance for the camera software and up above, we one one is clear as a lump sum, and the others we have to add together, right? Um, pulling up. I don't have a copy of the minutes in front of me. I'm pulling them up now. Okay. I just want to make sure I'm understanding everything precisely. Okay. Anybody else have any questions or comments about the report? $409,372 balance to fund the morgue and the CAMA software project. Um, so up above is the CAMA software project, correct? For Vanguard, it gives a total of $760,097.50, but under DevNet, we have to add those up ourselves. Oh, yeah, DevNet was... Can we get... A total for Vanguard and DevNet with everything in it. I think the Vanguard is yeah. being revised yeah, and they got it. included some things that weren't necessary. So I think so the I, revised bid that will be coming along here. I was aware that that isn't reflected in in this, though. It hasn't happened yet. Right. All right. So DevNet Donna was $51,300.94. Vanguard was $170,522.50. But yes, Vanguard, uh, Mia had stated that she needed to get a revised proposal from them due to the RFP being incorrect. Well, not incorrect, but yeah. I guess ultimately my question is with the balance that you have, the $409,000, and we take out the board. Will there be enough for the CAMA project if we go with the higher price? You're speaking enough as in with ARPA funding? Yes, I am. Okay, give me just a second. So before the report, was taken out of that balance of both. No, I didn't read it that way. Yeah, yeah we'll leave it alone. This is the remaining balance. Okay, with the. Um, everything included as the award summaries, um, including the coroner's cooler, 15800 the um, amount of $297,238.40 for the flyover. That leaves us with the remaining funds of $416,812 for ARPA. To so cover? The, to cover the morgue and the software, whichever one is cho chosen. I guess that's, and, and that's ultimately my question I'm concerned is, is that adequate? I guess it'll be what it'll be. Well, and, and once we, once we can get the update, updated Vanguard numbers, then we can give you a little clearer picture of what it would be. <clears throat> okay. All right, looks like roughly it should be. Okay. 
Any other questions or comments on the report, Mr. Watt? Um, so in the committee report, there was a comment about um, one of the members saying that the board can approve the low rate to meet the county's needs. And I see on the agenda there's another item two, so we're going to have more discussion. When we approve this report, we will get into that. Yes. Okay. <coughs> Any other questions or comments? And then the clerk could call the roll, please. Hughes? Yes. McGinnis? Yes. Hoppel? Yes. Sure? Yes. Watts? Yes. Whitlow? Yes. Williams? Yes. Um, Alt, yes. Barons, yes. Bowers, yes. Crow, yes. Ducat, yes. Geiger, yes. It's a gentleman good, thank you. Okay, <clears throat> now we have, as you can see on the agenda, discussion and action on the 2023 annual tax levy. We have copies of the levy amounts and then your packet. Uh, we discussed it. Minutes ago, the report of the truth and taxation. Does anyone want those, or did you bring your own? Did you have them from the public hearing? Still, they are in the packet. Oh, I didn't think she put them in there. Okay, I didn't think she put them in. <laughs> They're not in your packet. Yeah. So, does anyone need them, Donna? <laughs> Does anyone else want them? That's it? Yep. Yep, they're the exact same as what we gave you last week. Oh, it's on the board. Yeah, that's the percentages the amounts of revenue that they would have based on something. Did you need them? The amounts? Yeah. Sure. <laughs> By now, we've had several discussions on the matter. Um, I'm not sure where the best place is to begin, but does everybody understand what we're looking at doing here? fund or general fund, whichever term you used to call it. That again would be the same occurrence this year if we were to adopt the high rate. If we choose to go with the low rate, that probably is not going to happen. Although, as we pointed out, whatever rate we adopt and with the amount that is listed for that amount, we are not going to collect that amount because there are people that do not pay their taxes. There also are people that appeal their taxes. <clears throat> and in those cases where the Board of Review agrees to lower the taxes, then we suffer the So it's very difficult to say what the number's gonna be, but historically it comes close, but it will be short. Mr. Geiger. Yeah, I just can't sit here without saying that I like to give out a little background how sure. this thing could work. I'm new to this board and I'm sure I make mistakes every day. I guess my question is, is a year ago we all most of us thought in this room that our hourly employees were underpaid. So we need to make an effort into increasing their wages. And so uh, with the negotiation committee and this and that we've significantly up their wages it's fine the finance committee was given a charge to let's come up with a budget so uh, we worked with Jill and came up with a, a target number and uh, 
uh, it was uh, assumed and agreed upon that it was $1.9 million dollars uh, was the target that we need to do for real estate taxes to balance our budget. So, um, we got it all accomplished, balanced, and go from there. So the target there is the $1.9 million we need. If we put in the tax of the low, then we would get $1.939 million dollars and that hits that target mark dollar amount so I just don't want to just answer my taxpayers who voted for me to say why did you increase taxes when the process said that we can get by with the lower taxation rate this year now we may pay heck next year we might have to raise taxes <coughs> but maybe we'll have a, a reason to raise taxes, but I don't see the, raise, the reason this year to raise taxes. I think the assessment office has got some good plans how they can make sure that all the properties in our counties are uh, assessed fairly. It's just going to take several months or years to get that, that job done. So I just need some help understanding on why the system that we've employed, you know, is coming up with a different conclusion. Right. That's on the low. That's the low, yeah. yeah. And then the high would be. Well, um, that'd be $2,048,007. Even the low yeah. is higher than. It's still more. Right. There's like you're saying, that you don't know how you're going to collect all of it. You I don't get know it. How much you're I get it. But our job is to make the levy. And we could also say that the sales tax is under budget. You know, I mean, there's. I just want to make sure that everyone knows you're talking about the general fund for this line. This isn't the full levy that amount. So I just want to make sure everyone knows that it's a general fund that you're talking about. Your entire levy is going to be over six million dollars or close to six million, not just this amount. So I just want to make sure that that's clear so we can document it. <laughs> I think everybody does. Everybody understand that we're not going to collect one point nine three nine million. We never have collected the full amount that we have. and we don't know how much we're going to collect. The chances are it'll be very. It will be more than the one million nine, and maybe a little less, and maybe a little bit more. It's difficult to say. I think, I think that some of the reasons why the amount of increase is not only the increase in the wages that we have, I think, deservedly decided to pay to our employees, but we also have experienced a very large increase in our liability insurance and several other items in our budget for this year that have been increased exponentially greater than we anticipated. One of them is, again, though, the health insurance. We, we keep uh, we keep getting a burden on health insurance this year, 10% increase. <clears throat> that, <clears throat> that's way out of line when you talk about the cost of living or other things. Mr. Barron. Um, I think what we have to remember is right now our general fund doesn't have as much in it as is recommended or they recommend, I believe, a year's worth of cushion there, or whatever you want to call it. Right. And we it's a 90 day fund. Right, and we don't have that, and that has been important to have that in the past because the state has been slow at times in delivering monies that they owe us. And had we not had that money, we'd have had issues with paying the bill. 
right now the projections from some of the so-called people that have brains greater than us is that the state revenues are going to be down this year and they're going to have a hard time meeting their bills. So what impact that will have on us is hard to say, but they do have a way of corralling monies that go down there that should be coming back to us, but they can corral them and keep them down there. And we're the ones that end up on the short end of the state. So again, it's hard to say where all that is going to fall into place as well. I personally don't have any strong feeling one way or the other. I think it's up to the board to decide what they want to do. I don't have a recommendation, but it's between the low and the high. I think if you're going to go with the low, that's one thing. If you're not, then you should be going with the high. The mid to me doesn't really factor into this at all. Say that again, please. I think, I, I think you have to understand it's either between the low and the high. What's listed for the mid also triggers truth and taxation. Which is so, I mean, all. you're either going to do it or you're not. As far as going, as far as exceeding the rate, <clears throat> the difference, the difference between the low and the high, the numbers that are up there is about one hundred and eight thousand dollars. When you're looking at a budget of over six million dollars, one hundred and eight thousand isn't that great. I think you also need to understand what we levy in total represents a very small amount of your property taxes. The schools is where the where the biggest bulk comes from. I believe the county clerk can tell you that she has information on several of the school districts in this county that are already planning to raise taxes high enough that they'll be having food taxation as well. So no matter what we decide to do, property taxes are going to go up. <coughs> <clears throat> I think I think you know we can sit here and talk about all these different things as much as we want, but we need to make some decisions. I would move we adopt the low levy. Okay, we have a motion to adopt the low levy. Can you give the amount that's on there just? Um, and I'm looking for the levy amount, not the. In the, EAV. in the box number. The number at the bottom. Uh, it's at the bottom. Like five million nine hundred. Five million nine sixty nine eighty three. Okay. Do we have a second, Mr. Geiger? Do we have any qu further questions or comments about the motion? And none will the clerk call the roll, please. Okay. I am starting with McGinnis. Yes. Awful? No. Sure? Yes. Watts? Yes. Whitlow? No. Williams? No. Alt? Alt? Was that? Alt? Yes. <laughs> Barons? No. Uh, Bowers? Yes. Crow? Yes. Ducat? No. Geiger? Yes. And Hughes? No. Motion carried seven to six. Well, let's okay, we will be loving the uh, low amount. We will move on now to the Judicial and Public Safety Committee. Mr. Winlow. Mr. Chairman, members of the county board, the committee to whom was referred judicial and public safety would beg leave to submit the following report on matters before them. 
Your committee met at the courthouse on November 8, 2023 at 304 p.m. Members present were Whitlow, Hughes, Watts, and Williams. Mitchell Bates was absent, also present. County Board Chairman John Shore, Sheriff Clint Pazee, Coroner B. Bill Cheatham, State's Attorney Jim Devine, and ETS Director Eric Raymond. The meeting was called to order. It was moved by Raymond Williams and seconded by Scott Watts to approve the agenda. Motion carried by a voice vote. There were no public comments. Sheriff Clint Frazee presented his monthly report to the committee as follows. Correctional Officer Medina graduated the Corrections Academy on November 10th. Secure Tech Courthouse security slash alarm system upgrade should be completed mid-December. The Management Committee has requested updated quotes for the Administrative Center. Additional flock cameras may be possible be possibly be added in small towns if approved by their boards. Flock offered a five year contract to lock the prices in the current rate or they will increase by five hundred dollars per camera per year. Thirty arrest intakes in November, nineteen male, nine female, two juveniles. November jail population. Daily population average, 12.43, 11, 10 male, 1 female. November medical, zero hospital slash emergency room slash prompt care visits this month, 21 mental health visits, 9 nurse practitioner visits, 3 inmate medical and intake exams, zero dentist visits, one IMH lab, zero telehealth visits, one IMH Dr. Beck visits, zero Gibson City orthopedics, one initiated on buprenorphine, jail overtime for November, 134 hours paid, 51.2 hours comp, 76 holiday hours to comp. Part-time hours for November 28th. Corner Bill Cheatham reported the courier for the morgue will be delivered Monday. Cheatham also reported he has begun using a pathologist in Kankakee as stated in last month's meeting. This change will result in fewer driving miles for Cheatham and his deputies, but the autopsy fees are more expensive. State's Attorney Jim Levine presented a resolution for the Office of the State's Attorney's Appellate Pros Prosecutor to provide services in the State's Attorney's Office. The annual fee is increased from $8,000 to $9,000. Levine said the State's Attorney Appellate Prosecutor handles all appeals and provides training for the State's Attorney Office. It was moved by Williams and seconded by Steve Hughes to approve the resolution for the Office of the State's Attorney Appellate Prosecutor. A roll call vote was taken. Motion carried. Lastly, Divine reported grand jury was held today with six various cases. The committee reviewed the Circuit Clerk Lisa Hines' monthly report for November. ETS Director Eric Raymond reported a claim was submitted to the Joint Dispatch Liability Insurance. The ETSB board approved the Radio Council bid packet. This will be a large expense and $300,000 is budgeted for the project. Raymond said he received the Kenwood Radio Propagation Study. There was no old business. During new business, County Board Chairman John Shore recommended the Committee of the Truth in Taxation hearing at 11 a.m. December 7th. The hearing is a function of the County Board and requires a quorum of the County Board. The Committee reviewed the claims. It was moved by Williams and seconded by Watts to pay the judicial and public safety claims subject to County Board approval. A roll call vote was taken. 
motion carried. As there was no further business to come before the committee, it was moved by Williams, seconded by Hughes, to adjourn the meeting at 2.19 p.m. Motion carried by a voice vote. All which respectfully submitted, signed by members present, and I will move for its adoption. There is a motion on the floor to approve the judicial and public safety committee report, seconded by Mr. Williams. Are there any questions or comments? Mr. Crow. Page two, ETS Director Eric Brennan reported a claim for, well, no, go down to the ETSB board, approve the radio council. The packet is, should that be council? It's a council, yes. It's just a misspelling. Okay. Right. Where is that? I'm sorry. Right here. Oh, all right. Yep, I see and, it. Um, he received the Kenwood Radio Propagation Study. Will we hear more about that in the finance end of it? What is the propagation study? Well, <clears throat> Mr. Raymond isn't with us this morning. I'm not sure. Do you, can you answer it, Charlie? We'll have to wait until we can get some of your information. Okay. 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 Are there any other questions or comments? Seeing none, appropriate call the vote. Okay. We are starting with awful. Yes. Sure. Yes. Watts. Yes. Whitlow. Yes. Williams. Yes. Alt. Yes. Barons. Yes. Bowers. Yes. Crow. Yes. Ducat. Yes. Geiger. Yes. Hughes. Yes. McGinnis. Yes. Okay. Finance IT committee, Mr. Barron. Your committee to whom was, Mr. Chairman and members of the county board, your committee to whom was referred finance IT would beg leave to submit the following report on merits before them. Your committee met at the administrative center on December 7, 2023 at 9.21 a.m. Members present were McTaggart, Barron, Alt, Bowers, Geiger, McGinnis, Watts, also present county board chairman John Schur, finance manager Joe Johnson, Sheriff Clint Perdy, supervisor of assessments Mia McCammon, Myron Munyon with Compass Insurance, Susie Werner with Homestar Insurance, and County Board Member Don, Donna Crow. The meeting was called to order. It is moved by McGinnis and second by Alt to approve the agenda. Motion carried by a voice vote. There were no public comments. Myron Munyon with Compass Insurance reported all insurance renewals are complete and policies are getting issued. The next item will be in July for the Cyber Liability Insurance. Susie Warner with Home Star Insurance reported open enrollment is complete and everything is renewed for December 1. Warner also reported it has been quiet on claims end. The department heads gave their monthly reports. They are as follows. Supervisor of Assessment Ian McCammon reported the assessment office has finished equalization and publication dates are set for December 20th and December 21st. The deadline for filing is January 22nd, 2024. Once they have the publications from the newspapers, her office can submit all the information to the Illinois Department of Revenue and start filing their tentative abstracts. Also, McCammon said she will be meeting with the State's Attorney Jim Devine to discuss creating an intergovernmental agreement between the counties and townships that are without a township assessor. Currently, these townships are Belmont, Beaverville, and Papanaw. Requirements to become a township assessor include needing your CIAO designation. McCammon said all information regarding this is available on the Illinois Department of Revenue website. Finance Manager Jill Johnson reported she is waiting for the engagement letter from the auditors. In the meantime, she will continue working on end of year journal entries. Sheriff Clint Perzi reported he spoke with Verizon about the push to talk radio connection for the deputies. The cost is six fifty per month per line. There's also a five thousand dollar cost for equipment. Starcom has some other options with their wave app, so no decision is being made at this time. However, this may be a good option for fire departments and EMA. The Secure Tech Courthouse security alarm system upgrade will be complete this month. <coughs> Perzee will also get a quote for the Administrative Center. Last Friday, the deputies were measured for their ballistic vests. 
Because he is finishing up the star time contracts that are due by November 15th. Because he is actively pursuing grant opportunities for the radio upgrades. An email was received regarding a $50,000 grant from the building, the Build Illinois Bond Fund that will be for the radio upgrades. County Board Chairman John Schur reported he spoke at the Tax Planning and Zoning Committee about sales tax and the revenue we collect. He discovered that people buying items online are not always being charged the correct amount of sales tax. Sure brought this to the attention of Treasurer Kurt Albers, who also looked into the matter, but they were not entirely satisfied with the response from Springfield. Sure said his concern is that we are not getting all the sales tax revenue we should be getting, and he will be continuing to look into this and pursue further to get a resolution. Sure also encouraged everyone to review their recent receipts and look at sales tax they have been charged. The rate should be 6.50% unless you live in Watsika where the rate is 7.25%. Discussion began regarding the tax levy. Schur said the levy was talked about at length during the tax planning and zoning committee meeting, but no motions or recommendations were made. At the November board meeting, the full board approved the levy that was submitted at the high rate. Since that time, Doug Geiger has brought up some very interesting points that are worthy of discussion. Further discussion of the levy will be held at Tuesday board meeting when the full board makes their final approval. Geiger explained $1.9 million was budgeted for property tax revenue. The Tax Planning and Zoning Committee was given levy worksheets with high, mid, and low rates to review. Choosing the low rate results in 1.0487% extension, which is below the truth in taxation rate. This rate would generate $1,939,000 and would meet our needs. The mid rate would generate $2,013,000 and the high rate would generate $2,048,000 with an extension of 1.08, which triggers the truth in taxation. Geiger also reviewed the impact it would have on county highway, county bridge, and matching tax if the levy was changed, stating county highway would receive an additional 40000 if we proceed with the high rate, an additional 20000 for county bridge. Geiger continued stating that county sales and use tax was $1.97 million in 2022. This only projected to be $1.34 million this year and income tax was 1.58 million in 2022. There's only 1.2 million projected this year. Geiger added, it's easy to just increase taxes. But once you've asked taxpayers to pay more taxes, it's not going to come back down. This is an election year and while circulating his petitions, Geiger said he would do everything he could to keep taxes down. Scott Watts questioned why the discussion is being held today since the recommendation had already come out of the committee and the full board approved it last month. Geiger said he believes it is because all of the pertinent information wasn't available at the time and some of the things have changed since then. He believes we now have an estimate from the treasurer's office of what the final distribution will be. Johnson added that any changes to the levy will not impact the budget that has been posted. Sure noted some of the items to consider such as not collecting everything that is levied. There will always be people that don't pay their taxes and are going to appeal their taxes. Taxpayers that appeal their taxes go to the Board of Review and it's up to them to decide to grant their request or not. The hearing being held today is only to take testimony from citizens. No decision will be made at this hearing. Between today and Tuesday, it is imperative that the Board understands the levy process and come up come to an agreement at Tuesday's board meeting. Sure said the board also needs to keep in mind that they are taking some pretty ambitious obligations for Starcom radio programs for the flyover and camera system for the assessment office. Wage increases, a substantial increase in our liability premiums and an approximate 10% increase in health insurance each year. Lastly, Watts stated he realizes the board has to meet their obligations, but 21% increase in the levy over the past two years is too much. The committee reviewed the claims. Geiger inquired on how the policy and procedure committee decided on the reimbursement amount for hotel costs. He noticed the claims submitted for payment for reimbursement for hotel say that 
exceeds the daily rate, but also feels the daily rate is low. It was determined the claim submitted was for two nights at $85 per night, therefore falling below the approved rate. It is moved by Geiger and seconded by Barron to pay claims. So the county board approval, a roll call vote was taken, motion carried. During old business, sure reminded the committee of the tax, truth and taxation hearing being held at 11 a.m. Held today at 11 a.m. There was no new business, as there was no further business to come before the committee. It was moved by Paul Flowers and seconded by Watts to adjourn at 10 a.m. Motion carried by a voice vote, all of which is respectfully submitted, and I move for its adoption. Motion on the floor to approve the finance IT committee report. Second. 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 Are there any questions or comments from the report? Sir, Watts, yes. Whitwell, yes. Williams, yes. Alt, yes. Barons, yes. Bowers, yes. Crow, yes. Ducat, yes. Geiger, yes. Hughes, yes. McGinnis, yes. Awful. Yes. Okay, transportation and highway committee, Mr. Alt. <coughs> Mr. Chairman, members of the county board. Your committee to whom was referred transportation highway would beg leave to submit the following report matter before you. <clears throat> Your committee met at the Iroquois County Highway building on December, December 7, 2023 at 9, excuse me, at 8.30 a.m. Members present were all Crow, Williams, John Zumbalt, and Chad McGinnis were absent. Also present. County Engineer Greg Perkinson, County Board Chairman John Scherr, Concord Township Highway Commissioner Scott Storm, and Danforth Township Highway Commissioner Gary Perzi. The meeting was called to order. It was moved by Williams and seconded by Crow to approve the agenda. Motion carried by a voice, voice vote. <coughs> During public comments, Concord Township Highway Commissioner Scott Storm requested an update on the hiring of the county engineer. County Board Chairman John Kerr stated this, this is an ongoing process. A candidate was interviewed earlier this week. It's preferred to have a, at least one more candidate before making a decision. While this is an attractive position, many of the people that have been approached appear to be satisfied with their current positions. Additionally, efforts will be made, such as reaching out to alumni of schools and, and, and <clears throat> increasing the postings on the job boards. The claims and fin financial reports for the month were reviewed as moved by William and second by Crow to pay the bill subject to county board approval. A roll call vote was taken, motion carried. During new business, county engineer Greg Perkinson presented a res resolution allowing Greg Person to continue his appointment as acting county county engineer. It was moved by Williams to approve the resolution extending Greg Perkinson's appointment as the acting Iroquois county engineer. Sure stated that he has some concern with the termination clause. It believes a timeline should be identical of which someone is hired when they're <clears throat> He believes a timeline should be identified of when someone is hired, when their testing is completed, when their duties being a county engineer, and if Perkinson is willing to offer assistance for a short period of time to the new hire. Williams attended this, amended the motion to approve the resolution extending Craig Perkins' appointment as acting. Iroquois County Engineer through February 28, 2024. The motion was seconded by Donna Crow. Motion carried by a voice vote. Also, during the new business resolution, the county bridge fundings were presented for approval in Ashkham and Concord. It was moved by Wade and a second by Crow to approve the resolution for county bridge funds for Ashkham Section 23-03104. Dash zero zero dash dr and Concord section twenty three dash zero eight one zero one dash zero zero dash dr motion carried by voice vote during the old business sure remind the committee of the truth that taxation hearing being held at eleven a.m. 
the county board at the county board room is, is a function of the county board and requires a quorum of the county board as there was no further business to come before the committee he was moved by William and second by all to adjourn at 9.06 a.m. Motion carried by a voice vote. All of this is re respectfully submitted. And I offer this for your consideration. Okay, we have a motion on the floor to approve the Transportation and Highway Committee report. Second by Mr. Hughes. Are there any questions or comments on the report? I would like to point out that the resolution of pointing Greg Williams, <clears throat> Greg Perkinson, excuse me, to continue as our acting county engineer. The date that was selected, February 28, 24, was selected for the reason that the Ford County Board approved a resolution for that date. So in order for us to be in agreement with them and run parallel, that's the reason that date was selected. Just so we all understand that part. There are no further questions or comments. The clerk will call the roll, please. Watts? Yes. Whitlow? Yes. Williams? Yes. Alt? Yes. Barons? Yes. Bowers? Yes. Crow? Yes. Ducat? Yes. Geiger? Yes. Hughes? Yes. McGinnis? Yes. Awful? It's gone, sorry. And yes. Shirk? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay, next on the agenda are the appointments. They're listed on the agendas that you have in front of you. Do we have a motion to approve the appointment, Mr. Williams? Is there a second, Mr. Bowers? Are there any questions or comments? I'm just making um, everyone aware that this notice of vacancy in the Office of Drainage Commissioner um, for the Onarga Drainage District Number 5 I'm just making sure you all know that you are approving that this drainage district is working <coughs> on one commissioner right now because of two deaths. So they're actively searching for uh, ditch commissioners, but they have not found anyone since the second one had passed away. So just want to make sure you guys are aware that that is how that district is rolling right now. Any other questions or comments? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. That motion passed. <clears throat> Next are the claims. Do we have a motion to approve the claim? So made. Mr. Watts, is there a second? Mr. Williams. Please, everybody has received a copy of the claims in their package this morning. It's not online. Are there any questions or comments about the claims? Whitlow, yes. Williams, yes. Alt, yes. Barons, yes. Powers, yes. Crow, yes. Ducat, yes. Geiger, yes. Hughes, yes. McGinnis, yes. Sher, yes. Watts. Yes. Is there any old business to come before the board this morning, Mr. McGinnis? Just a question for Eric. Um, I probably should. I should have asked this when we approved the 2022 report. I just realized that was 2022. When's 2023? Is the report? Uh, it's an annual report that's always done after the fact. So yeah, within ninety approved. days, we'll be working on the twenty twenty three report in the coming months. Uh, within ninety days of the end of our fiscal year. That's not a requirement. No, yeah, he's not. He commented on that at the not that I'm aware of, and I can look into it. But Is there any other old business this morning? Is there any new business? Item five in the thing published annually within 90 days after the end of the county's operating fiscal year in pamphlet form. I know five under the thing in, the, in our statute. Statute. Okay. I'll take a look at that. Yeah. There any new business to come before the board? Let's talk to you a minute. Let's talk to you a minute. You want to do what? You want to discuss something with the board? No. Okay. I'm sorry. Okay. We have a motion to adjourn. Mr. Barron, seconded by Mr. Bowers. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. The meeting is adjourned.